Welcome to this Find DSP demo. I'm Peter Larsen from Loudsoft. The screen shows a two-way speaker system where we have the on-axis 15, 30 and 45 degree off-axis responses, all simulated by DSP and using real acoustic measurements. You also see some uh, red and green triangles. This is about power output and we will talk about that a little later. Let's take a look at the low pass section. That's a fourth order Butterworth response at this frequency, which is also indicated by the vertical uh, dashed line here. It is also paired with the high pass section. So when I move the frequency up and down using the mouse wheel, we can see all the curves are updating, including phase. We can take a look at this peak and dip element having a frequency around 1K, which we can vary. We can also change the Q and the level. With the optimize on, we'll try and optimize the white curve to the green target. Yes. With this button, we can turn on the dry voltage. This is the calculated output voltage from the amplifier. In this case, the red one is the woofer output and the green is the tweeter output. You can see the woofer is below these uh, points that are the maximum allowed voltages at these frequencies. This picture shows the safe operating area, which is the red curve. It's based on the displacement of the woofer, which is the blue curve, that has a maximum at very low frequencies and has a minimum at the tuning frequency. At this tuning frequency, we can boost the woofer safely a lot, like the red curve here, and this is precisely what we do over there. But we have to protect the woofer against this high excursion at very low frequencies, and we have done that with a high pass filter. I have opened Finebox, which will help us to find the voltage levels for getting maximum excursion and various frequencies. It actually also calculates voice call temperature and much more, but right now we can use it to import the voltages here, and this defines the points that we are seeing here. In this example, we are using one amplifier to drive both woofer and tweeter. And therefore, we need some passive components to form a crossover to drive the tweeter and the woofer. The passive components can be treated just like the others, and we can change them and change the response. Like this. And they can also be optimized. When we have found some good components for the passive crossover, we can do the rest of the work in DSP because we have global DSP components up here and we can simply select them and then straighten the response up there and do the equalizing. We started this design as hybrid, meaning both passive and DSP. And we can use the wizard to optimize the passive components just by dragging with a mouse. We can find a good curve that we can later equalize with DSP. We can find the power in all the components, including the passive components, and we can input the total voltage here, so we can see what is the real drive voltage to the total system. In this example, we have actually imported the measured impedance curves, and turning on the impedance, we can see the simulated impedance and check if the impedance maybe gets too low which we can compensate for with the passive components. Finally, we can export the bi-quad coefficients here, or we can export them all in one document. So that was the end of the presentation. You can download more information and the manual from loudsoft.com. Thank you.